All right. So this morning, we're going to talk about, obviously, hope, but we're going to talk about how to hope, yeah. okay? Because our key, our key text of this uh, whole series, Romans 15, 13, it's telling us to hope, right? It yeah. says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're to abound in hope, right? That's the series title. Um, and so how, how are we to abound in hope? Well, it says right there that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's something that God has given to us. So we need to use that in conjunction with God, right? right. Um, the, it's, it's backed by somebody, somebody with a higher authority than us, that hope. It's backed by that. It's our, our hope is not in man or possessions or frivolous things, okay? Our hope must be in God of hope or it's not hope at all, okay? Um, so so it's, a, it's a guarantee. If you, if you read Hebrews 11.1 1, in the Amplified, it says, faith is the substance or the title or deed of things hoped for yeah. and that hope is a divine guarantee, a divine guarantee. So, so not only is it just a regular guarantee, but is guaranteed by God, the divine, okay? Um, so hope can't just be a word that we say. We, we, we can't just say, well, I, I, I hope something happens and it have no meaning, okay? Um, just like faith and love, God has given us hope to act out, okay? It's, it is an action that, that we act out. Hope is action tied to a promise, Okay, God said it, so we are hoping and believing, and then our faith kicks in, okay? Good. We read about Jesus coming down as a baby and dying on a cross, right? That is love acted out, okay? We read about Noah building this ark with no rain in sight, none in the forecast. That is faith acted out, right? We have to be known for more than just what we say, church, So how can we put this hope into action, okay? And so I broke this down into four parts, okay? And, and so how do we hope? We hope, all right? H-O-P-E, hope. The H, we need to understand that his way is higher than our way, okay? If, if, if we're called to something, we need to do it his way, not our way, right? Um, the O, we need to obstruct the attacks of the enemy, Okay, the, the, your enemy, Satan, the devil, okay, is going to come against you. If you're walking in unison with God, he's going to come against you. That's just the way it is, okay? P, we need to position our trust. And then E, we need to expect the hardest. So first one, his way is higher than our way, okay? Um, hope, hope for destinations have valuable pathways, Hope for destinations have valuable pathways. We need to understand that in order to get someplace, there is a path to get there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, too many times, we kind of cut the path out and we just look at the destination, okay? So Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We all have a destination we're hoping to reach, right? That there, there, there are dreams that we've had, that there, there are callings upon our lives that, that, that we're trying to obtain, right? But when God speaks to us, okay, we forget that sometimes that there is a path that we must go down in order to reach that destination. That path can sometimes be, get, be a difficult one to go down. More often than not, it's going to be difficult, okay? And um, we can fall into this trap of wanting or even expecting that our destination would just magically appear before us, right? That, that, we believe in something, so in order, for, in, in, so since we believe it, it's just going to have to happen. That, that's not always true. It will eventually happen. If it's backed by God, it will happen, but, but there is a journey that we are to go on, 
Okay, we have to understand that. Um, um, the reality is that there are very few paths that we'll ever go down that don't have any bumps or curves um, that we need to navigate through. And so when we encounter the obstacles along the path or when the challenges of life, they, they, they show their ugly face just as we are in this season of progress, just as, as we are climbing the mountain, just as we are obtaining something that God has given to us and everything is going great, that's when we get knocked down, right? That's when on the journey, something happens that we didn't think about, right? Because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and we get distraught, right? We get dismissive of, of maybe that just wasn't God or, or the, the dreams that he's put in my life. Maybe I just missed it, right? Um, we, we start freaking out and feeling like our hope is starting to kind of diminish. We might say things like, I don't, I don't know what I got myself into. I, I, I shouldn't have been doing this. I shouldn't have thought this high of myself. Why, why could I ever think that I could do this? Or maybe we get down and we quit altogether, right? We're, we're just, we just, it's, it becomes hopeless. But when we ask God to teach us his way, because it's not our way, all right? We're here for a purpose and that's God's purpose, Right? And he has given us free will to, to be happy in certain things, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying anything like our, our dreams and our passions and our hobbies. I'm not saying anything bad against that. But God has put, he, put us here for a purpose, right? And so when we're on this journey, we need to ask God, teach us your way, God. Right. Teach us your way. The bumps in the road, when we do that bump, the bumps in the road, they, they can become smoothed out. Not because the bumps disappear, but because God has us in the palm of his hand and he's helping us navigate around those things, right? So, so the bumps seem to smooth out and the curves seem to be straightened. And once we realize that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, we strengthen the hope that is in us, Okay? You have to be on the right path. Hope recognizes that our perspective is limited, but his is unlimited and all-encompassing. See, it's hard to keep hope strengthened when you're on the wrong path, right? When God has called you to do something, but you are no longer following where God has called you to be, it's hard to reach that place, right? Right? If we were, if we said, hey, our destination is St. Louis, Missouri, Okay, so what we need to do is go out here, take a right, go to Kabul, take another right. But if we get to Kabul and we don't take a right and we head straight to Springfield, guess what? We're not ending up in St. Louis, right? Where God called you to be, if you start going down the wrong path, you will never end up where he called you to be. We cannot hope for something that is outside the will of God who is hope and expect to reach our destination. It's through God that we have this hope. If we are relying on our own ways and our own thoughts, it's only, to, oh, it's only gonna be so long before all hope is lost. Because if we're not following the God who is hope, you're not gonna have hope, right? And even when we are on the right path and following the God of hope, it's easy to be so destination-minded That's all we think about. We just think about the destination and we forget about how to get there. So often our hope jumps straight to the destination and overlooks the value of the pathway. And so for most people, okay, we're we're in a season, Scotty said earlier, it is extreme temperatures, right? we We are in an extreme season right now as far as the earth is, um, whatever. There is a reason, okay, we, we say this like, you know, Jesus Christ, he's the reason for this season. There's a reason why we're in this season, right? There is. Uh, so summer, okay, most of us, okay, we like summer. So summer is your destination, if you will, okay? Um, and then when we go through winter, that is the path to summer. Right, because there's there's seasons in this world, okay, that is God's design that we are following out, okay. If you probably could right now, you could probably follow summer around the whole year in certain places, okay. But if you're like most of us, okay, you're probably stuck 
not stuck, but you're just planted here in Willow Springs, Missouri, okay? And we get the extremes of all seasons, right? Right? We are blessed to get the best part of summers and the worst part of summers and the best part of winters and the worst part of winters. That's just how, how it is here, okay? And so in order to get to summer where it's flourishing with beautiful trees and flowers and just, you know, you can go to the beach and the water's warm and everything's right, in order to get to that point, you have to go through some winter, right? What happens in the fall and the winter? Things die, right? So in order for spring and summer to bring this new growth, you have to go through some fall and some winter so some things in your life can die to make room for the things that are new in the spring and summer, right? There is a journey and your journey has a purpose. You may not like what's happening, but God is doing something inside you. God is doing something in this earth right now. There is a reason why it is negative five degrees right now. And our hope is that summer is coming. Amen? So there is a reason why sometimes when you, you know God has called you to this place. God has called you to get to that job. God has called you someplace. You have dreams that you know are, are, are heaven bound. But you have to go through some seasons of winter because you cannot take what you have right now to the destination. It, it, it will not hold up. You will not be able to get there while holding on to what needs to die. Right? Amen? So we need to stop being so fixated on where we're going. You're going to get there. God has called you and that's great. And that's good to have dreams and visions and know where you're going to end up, but stop being so fixated on where you're going. God is more interested in the path by which we get there because on the path, how we get there, that's where God's going to mold you. That's where God's going to grow you. That's where change is going to happen for the good because the things in your life that need to die off, the things in your life that you need to let go of, that's where that happens so that you are able to be the person that is willing to end up at the destination. See that there, there was a, a bunch of Israelites, right? And they, and they get, um, uh, they, they, they get to exit Egypt, right? right? God has called them out. God has called them to a promised land, right? They're all called. The people of Israel, they are called but the thing about their journey was they ended up going and seeing what their promise was and they had too much baggage. They had too much unbelief. They had too much fear in their lives to be able to obtain what God was going to give them. So they wandered and they wandered and they wandered until all that baggage was gone. All that fear was gone because there was only two that believed, right? There was only two that believed. Until all that baggage was gone, they couldn't enter. So you're, you may be in your life right now where you're like, I, I know I'm right there. I know I'm at the threshold, but I can't go in. I don't know what is happening. I've been hoping, I've been hoping, I've been hoping, but I can't seem to break through there's something in your life. There's a baggage in your life that you need to let go. There's something in your life that needs to die out before you can accept the new you and obtain the destination. Good. Second one, obstruct the enemy's attacks. Who is the master of your mind? You need to, you need to ask yourself this. Who is the master of my mind? 1 Thessalonians 5.8. But let us who are of the day sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Why is the helmet the hope of salvation? Think about all the attacks you've experienced in your life. Where do they all start? Where does every attack from the enemy start? It starts in your mind. Because if he can control your mind, if he can control the central nervous system, the central decision-making of your life, of your body, then he has control over you. So we need to protect our mind with the helmet, the hope of salvation. 
faith, love, and hope, they're all described as pieces of armor in the Bible. The other pieces of armor, the breastplate, the shield, they protect the vital organs, right? The, the, the heart and things. But the helmet of hope protects the head, the brain, the mind. The hope of salvation in which all hope is grounded is an indispensable piece of armor. You have to have it in order to go through life following God's will. You need the helmet. Notice I said following God's will. You can go through life and you can do whatever you want. God has given us free will to do whatever we want. And the thing about that is if you're not following God, you're probably not getting attacked by the devil. And then you need to check yourself on that, right? But too many times we get outside of what God wants for us and life becomes fairly easy. Fair, fairly easy. I'm not, I'm not saying that you, you, you don't have problems, right? I'm not, but look, look, at, look at the situation that we live in right now, the, the, the world. There, there are lots of famous people that have lots of money and they may, they may not be following God and life may be kind of easy for them. See, that's a problem. If you're, if you're not getting attacked by the devil on a fairly daily basis, check yourself, check your heart because he is attacking those that are following God, okay? So we need this helmet. When your hope is attacked, you need to recognize it and call it out. In Psalms 42 uh, verse five, 42 verse five, um, why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. By soul, we're talking about our emotions, okay? We're talking about our thinking. God created us to be um, 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 body and soul and spirit, okay? But all too often, we allow our souls, our, okay, our emotions, our thought process to have the last word. We let our emotions dictate how we're going to react sometimes. We let our emotions dictate how we're going to do anything in life. We let it become the deciding vote of how we're going to carry out something. But we cannot allow feelings to be our decision makers. Emotions, they come and go, right? right. They're unreliable. Instead, we need to draw on the strength of our spirit. Okay, that Holy Spirit, right? The, when we abound in hope by the Holy Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit that we need to count on right here. So we need to draw on the strength of your spirit and talk to your soul. You need to tell your emotions and your thinking when it's bad thinking, you need to say no. Not today, not ever. We need to stop this right now because it can, it can start to grow, okay? It, it, it can begin to take root in your life, and then it's harder, okay? So when it starts to come against you, that's when you have to talk to it. You have to speak to it. So we're taking active responsibility for keeping our hope alive. No matter what season or challenge we may find ourselves in, remember, okay, we, we gotta think about this as love, faith, and hope. Love is our foundation, okay? That is Jesus Christ, okay, right? He came down in love. Love is our foundation. And then faith, okay, it activates the miraculous, okay? We are believing in something. We are believing in a miracle. God has done it. I believe it, and it's going to happen. That is faith, right? And hope is what connects the two. So our hope literally paves the way for miracles, so if you don't put your helmet on, if you don't speak to your soul, those negative thoughts, they can creep in, they can take over and they can make you do things that you should never do, make you think things that you should never think. So we need to make the decision to put on God's hope and claim victory in this battle, okay? We need to stand on our salvation. That is our hope. So we choose a hope-filled scripture, and just speak it over your life every day. Choose something that, 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 just, that just strengthens the hope inside you. And every morning, every evening, whatever, whatever time that you spend in God's word, whatever time you spend in just your quiet place, you just speak that over your life. Decide who's the master of my mind. 
Who's the master of my mind? Is it the negative thoughts? Is it the, is it the negative feelings that, 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 that are driving this? That is me? Or is it God's word? Is it God's promises? Third, we need to position our trust. We need to position our trust. We need to say to our heart, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't give up today because there's hope for tomorrow, yeah. right? And in Jeremiah 17, uh, verse seven, and we're gonna read through eight. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. You cannot separate those two. You cannot have hope in God, but not trust him, right? You cannot trust him without having hope in him. It's just the way it's gonna work. Okay, as we trust God and place our hope in him, that's where we find peace like water that's going to sustain us through the hard times, through the easy times. That's what's gonna keep us grounded. By trusting that God has our tomorrow, we find the confidence to face whatever today throws at us. So life here on earth presents very few guarantees. Very few guarantees. And I'm sure that's why the Bible says that we have to position our trust. Because see, here's the thing. You can trust in the world. You can trust in your possessions. You can trust in name it. It's going to fail you. It will fail you. You can have trust in somebody that you love and you care for. They will fail you. But you put your trust in God, he will never fail you. He will never forsake you, right? He always was, he always is, and he always will be. That's something easy to trust in. The, the same God, he never changes. Easy to trust in. We often spend our lives trying to build up securities for ourselves, right? Um, with what the world has to offer, whether, and I'm not saying these things are bad at all, but you know, you want a good paying job, right? You, you, you try to become debt free. You don't want a mortgage on your place, whatever it may be. You can't put your trust in those things, right? I'm not, I'm not, not saying it's bad to have a very good job. Okay. You should, right? You should want to be able to provide for yourself, for your family, whatever it may be. Um, but if we're chasing those things, if we, if, if we let the daily rituals, the daily routines become something bigger than what God is in our life, that can't be what's going to anchor you. That can't be the tether. That can't be the rope that, 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 that is anchored down in the ocean floor up to you because it will fail, right? It will Fail. It sounds simple, but do you really trust your tomorrow with God? Do you wake up in the morning and say, hey, it's all going to be good. No need to worry. And then things come against you, right? Because that's what's going to happen. I'm not saying every day, but it will happen. Things will come against you. You, you, will, you will get to some hurdle in the road. You will get to a bump. You'll get to a curve. You'll get to some steep inclination in your journey. In that moment, does fear take over and say there's no hope for tomorrow? No, hope right then keeps you battle ready. It keeps you fighting forward and it keeps you expecting something tomorrow, okay? Do you know for sure that God has got you fully in the palm of his hand? Because that's the only way that you're going to be able to counteract the attacks from the devil. You have to be his and his alone. You cannot serve two masters. 
Something I think about when, when, when I'm talking about trust and stuff, um, a really good song, um, Do It Again by Elevation Worship, right? And it, and it says in there, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Are you able to say those words? Can you say those words fully and completely believing that God has you, that he is your confidence, when, when I first um, uh, started getting in with the youth group, Shauna Connor, who used to go to church here for years, she, she started helping out, okay? And it was, it was easy for me to say that if, if I'm on the right road, if I'm going the right direction, if God has told me to do all of these things, it, it was easy for me not to worry where we were going to end up. I didn't, I, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe it's just, I'm blessed with this. I don't get caught up in the worry. Okay. I don't, I don't get caught up in, in what might happen. I mean, it's, it's good to be a steward and, and say, okay, be ready for the attacks, right? But to worry when there's no reason. And, and so she could never understand that, you know, we'd plan a trip or whatever. And she goes, I just don't see how, how you're not even worried about this. And I'm like, I feel like, you know, we're, we're doing what God wants us to do. We should be good. You know, it's like, it's no big deal. And that would just drive her insane, right? But I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. God's, again, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's never failed anybody before. He hasn't failed me yet. I think there's a pretty good chance that he's never going to fail me again. Exactly right? right? Yeah. I'm good. That is my confidence. So if you lose that confidence, you need to check yourself, okay? So no matter where you find yourself today, whatever is going on around you, do not allow what is happening in your today dictate what your tomorrow is going to look like, right? <coughs> so you're going to face things day to day to day, but you got to stand strong in the battle. You got to stand strong when the devil's going to come against you. You got to stay strong when anything comes against you. Because if you start to lose heart and you start to lose hope and you start to lose joy and you start to lose peace, you're never going to make it to tomorrow. And see, the thing about God is, God's called you to tomorrow, okay? Until, until Jesus Christ comes back, God has called you to tomorrow. You're here for a reason. We're gonna start to close, whoever wants to come up. Um, fourth thing, we need to expect the harvest. Expect the harvest. Planting seeds of hope in the expectation of a harvest. Planting seeds of hope in the expectation of a harvest. Good. Psalm 67, 6 says, Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. That is God's law right there. And they are calling it down. The earth shall yield increase expect something to happen. It shall happen. God our own God shall bless us. Shall. It shall happen. We all use the word hope every day without even really thinking about it, right? Like, like when this weather was about to come, you know, I'm sure some of us like, boy, I hope it don't get too bad. I, 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 I hope it's not going to take too long to get someplace. Or I, I you know, maybe you, you, you're going to go out to eat. I hope the food's good. Maybe you get the electric bill in the mail and you're like, I, ho I hope it's not too much. We're, we're using hope all the time, okay? But did you realize that your level of hope today quite literally determines what's going to happen in your tomorrow? But the hope has to be backed. It has to have a guarantee. So it might be easier to approach it from the opposite point of view, okay? So we say... Uh, when we say a situation is hopeless, okay, 
We're saying that there's no point in putting any further effort into it. It's hopeless. It's done. It's finished. It's dead. All of these things. If someone says they're feeling hopeless in how they're living today, they're saying that there is nothing for them to hang on to that's going to draw them forward. They've stopped. A loss of hope means you've lost your sense of meaning. There's no clear horizon that you're traveling towards. It's like they have lost sight of their tomorrow. Pretend that you're swimming, okay, in a pool or an ocean or whatever it may be, okay? What keeps you paddling, okay, what keeps you swimming is hope. It's hope that I'm going to get to the other side. It's hope that I'm going to get to where I need to be, right? But when hopeless sets in, you stop swimming. And the thing about swimming is once you stop, you sink. It's done. You have to be kicking your legs. You have to be doing something to keep your head above water. That is hope. But when hopeless sets in, death starts to happen. It stops. The forward progress ceases. And if you're not swimming while you're in the water, you're sinking. It's either one or the other. See, when you're on land, you can be walking and you can be going forward or you can just stand there and standing, you're not getting anywhere, but you're not dying, right? But if you look at it as you're swimming in a body of water, if you're not, if your hope has ran out, then you've lost. You've given up. You stop swimming and you start sinking. So if you lose sight of the tomorrow, we could think about it as a farmer who, who, who grows um, uh, a crop, right? They plow the ground, they plant the seed, they water the seed, and they remove the weeds even before something else comes up, right? The crop that they anticipated to come up, it hasn't came up yet, but they're still doing all this work, right? right? Exactly right. It hasn't came up yet, but they're still working. Why? Because they have the hope of a harvest. They have a hope of a harvest. Without this expectation, the farmer would not have committed the cost, the the time, the effort needed to cause the crop to grow. They wouldn't have done any of this stuff. If they didn't expect the harvest, they would sit there and look at this ground and not do anything. If you have no expectation that you don't have any will to work, right? Right. They'd be staring at a patch of dirt in front of them, not seeing the possibility it contained. See, so you can like that. Um, there's a lot of teachers, okay, and, and, and coaches who, who are really good examples of this. Um, I remember like going to school and um, uh, boy, th- th- there'd just be some kids that I felt like they were worthless. You know, like they just, they goofed off all the time. They, they wasn't on track of doing anything. But you could see some of those kids, a teacher, a coach, they would spend just a little bit more time with them, right? And, and, and maybe they'd even, you know, take them home or, or, or whatever it was, and they'd spend just a little bit more time with them. Why? Because they expected a harvest. They seen something in that student, that child, that kid, that then there's something in there and, and, and if I just work it just a little bit, if, 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 I, if I just kind of maybe till up the ground just a little bit in their lives, maybe if I start planting some seeds and I start taking some of them weeds out of their lives, they're going to turn into something great. They're going to be somebody in this world. But if I don't do it, Nothing's going to happen. See, the thing about the farmer is if he doesn't do anything in the field, 
nothing's going to happen. If you don't do something in your life, nothing's going to happen. If you don't go in day in and day out, planting that proverbial seed in someone's life, making strides to go forward to the destination God has called you to be, nothing's going to happen in your life. Without the expectation of the harvest, it's really hard to hope. We, without the expectation that something good is going to happen in your life or someone else's life or in this community, it's hard to hope for that. Because how can you hope for something that you don't think is going to ever happen? See, the devil wants to come against you. He wants to rob you of your hope. He doesn't want you to live for a new tomorrow. He doesn't want you to think about the harvest that is yours. He wants you to dwell on the possibility that you may experience a loss. Maybe you've had losses before and he's gonna remind you of that. Maybe there's something in your life that's happened that, that has really put you down. He's gonna bring that back to your memory. But the successful farmer, okay, he goes back, works hard, and commits. Why? Because he's got hope, right? Because maybe he's got enough hope that says, I didn't have a good crop this year, but I know God is going to increase the crop next year because of this, right? He's got hope. He's got an expectation that things are going to turn around. The truth is, while we have a potential harvest in our future, everyone experiences something, some situation, some circumstance that challenges our hope along the way. And the only way the enemy wins is if you give up. But to have resilient hope, the kind that aligns our present perspective what we see in front of us to our future reality, saying, I know it looks dark and I know it's going to be tough, but I know God has called me to light. I know God has called me to a future. He's given me a hope and a future, but I have to put in the work. All right. Good. All right. It moves us beyond our past disappointments and positions our today where we are at currently in God's tomorrow, where he has called us to. When you start to understand hope in these terms, you'll begin to realize that you've got a role to play in putting hope into action. It's not just a gift that he gives you and you just take and that's it. You have to use it. You have to use the hope that he's given to you. So again, we need to understand that his ways are higher than our ways. We need to obstruct the attacks from the enemy. We need to position our trust because trust without hope is not hope, right? Or trust without hope is not trust and hope without trust is not hope. You can't have one without the other. And then we need to expect the harvest. We need to understand that God's law in this life is if you plant it, a harvest will come. But if you don't, nothing's going to happen. So this morning, I'm going to ask you um, so, some, some questions that, that you answer to yourself. Are you, ex are you experiencing some unexpected obstacles in your life? Some valleys, so, some, some, some steep inclines, some curves, some bumps in the road. Hang on to hope in the midst of your journey. Whether it's hard, whether it's easy, you still got to hold on to hope. And instead of, of crying out to God and saying, why God is this happening to me? Because here's the thing about journeys and paths, right? That's where God kind of challenges you. That's where God grows you. That's where God molds you. Stop asking why God and asking, what are you wanting to accomplish in this place? Stop asking why and start asking what for? What's this for? And take it head on. We have to keep the helmet on to obstruct any um, attacks 
If you're facing uncertain circumstances, decide today not to lose heart. If there's something coming against your mind, speak to that. Say, no, not today. Not, not, not going to give that any ground. Not going to let that take root in my life. Declare out loud, I will see the goodness of my God in my tomorrow where he's called you to. And don't let the things around you stop you from looking ahead to what God has prepared for you. See, that's what the Israelites did, didn't they? they see, if you read that story, God says, go out and see and, 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 and take notice or something of the land. What I have given to you. Look at it. See how you like it. Never once did they say, or did God tell the people, judge yourself against who's there. But too many times, that's what we do, right? So we have a dream and a vision, but too many times we see all the obstacles and we say it can't be done. Just like those spies for Israel, they go out there and they're like, yeah, 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 it's flowing with milk and honey. And there are giant grapes, but there are giants there and we are small in their eyes. And God said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sure he's like, what? I didn't ask you that. He just said, look, look at what I've given to you. See, it's easy to be controlled by what we see and not by what we believe, right? That's where hope steps in. That's where hope steps in that divine guarantee that it's going to be just so. Just as God had said, and I'm believing it, and I'm going to keep my hope strengthened, and I'm going to keep my hope alive. So what's your level of hope today? What is your level of hope today? Can you, ho- can you hope in the midst of challenges? Can you hope in the midst of circumstances? Can you hope in the midst of bad situations that there is a tomorrow and it's going to be better than today? Do you have that kind of level of hope? Do you have the kind of hope that it's expecting something? Expecting something good in your life. So when we have that kind of hope, anything's possible. See, it says, through God, anything is possible, right? The only way that God doesn't get to do something is if us, his hands and feet, quit. They quit. Anything is possible through God. But you got to be the hands. You got to be the feet. You got to be doing something. To keep hope alive, you got to keep looking forward. Don't let what is in front of you, the obstacle that is in front of you, do not let that determine whether you stop or go forward. That's not up to you. Follow where God has called you to go and go. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that in times of troubles, in times of need, that that we can keep hope alive because you are hope, God. God, help us to understand that it's not in our power, it's not in our strength, but it's in you, Lord. That is where our hope comes from. God, help us understand that that even though the road may be difficult and even though the path may be hard, help us understand that you are doing something in that moment. Something that's going to grow us, to mold us, Lord. God, help us to keep that helmet that is the hope of salvation over us, to protect us in times of trouble, in times of difficulty, when the enemy's coming against us, Lord, keep our mind free. Keep our mind free of anything from the devil and let you be the master of it, Lord.
God, help us to understand that to trust you is to have hope in you. And that without one, you can't have the other, Lord. God, help us to believe that we can't go through life without this hope. That if we're not moving forward, we're just dying. And through all of these things, God, this helps us to expect what's going to happen, the harvest. So when we wake up in the morning, we expect something good to happen. We expect that the calling on our lives is going to be be fulfilled eventually till Jesus Christ has come back on this earth. We are here for a reason, and that is to plant seeds and to expect new growth in our lives, in the lives around us, in our communities, in our schools, and in this world, Lord. God, give us patience when we need to slow down. Give us strength to keep going. Lord, help us just to navigate through this life. And we, when we need that extra little bit of hope, God, that you come into our lives, you show us that hope is worth keeping alive. Thank you, Lord, for the hope placed in me, the hope placed in everyone around this place, Lord. You show us how to live and how to give and to be the light in this dark, dark world, Lord. We thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said, amen, amen. You all are dismissed. Thank you so much. Be careful as you go home and stay warm.